Hi, this is Mike from Mugs and Boxing Reviews and How To, and on today's video we'll be taking a second look at how to buy a power supply. Keep watching to find out more. Okay, on today's video we'll be doing part two of our power supply series. Uh, this is the second part. The first one was actually how to find out what power supply we need, which you can uh, actually watch from the links up there. And the third part in the series will be actually how to install it. So if you want to find out how that goes, don't forget to click on the subscribe button and the like button, all that kind of stuff, and you'll be notified of future video releases. So moving on, let's buy a power supply. Now, buying a power supply, in theory, should be one of the easiest things you can possibly do. But because we're heading into 2021 and we've just come kind of out of COVID times and potentially going into COVID times still, supplies and stocks are still extremely limited. The supply chains haven't quite recovered over the summer period and now we've just had Christmas, etc. Anyway, you get the general idea. Stocks are a little bit kind of out of whack. Prices are certainly out of whack. So you may find at the moment you're paying a little bit more than you would normally, which is a very good reason why you should actually shop around and make sure you're actually getting the best value for money. So there's a few ways of doing that. And also there's a few ways of actually working out again what is going to be the best power supply for you? We already know what wattage we need, but we also need to take into consideration things like how many connections we need. So ideally, you want to look at your system, look at all your individual drives. Say if you've got a multitude of SATA drives, then you're going to need a certain amount of SATA connections. Really, the most important thing is going to be things like your CPU power connection. So do you need a 4-pin? Do you need a 4 plus 4-pin? Four do you need a 4 plus 4-pin four plus a separate 4-pin? The list goes on so do take into consideration what motherboard you're using it's going to have uh, quite a profound effect on what power supply you need also obviously your wattage and your graphics card your graphics card is going to be one of the things which is again going to be very crucial to know what actually you need off your power supply so generally most graphics cards in the kind of mid-range need either a six or a single eight pin connector quite often they may need a six plus an eight or some of the older ones may need an 8 plus an 8. And if you're looking at some of the very, very new high-end cards, then you may need uh, three of those. So it does get kind of scary, and you don't really want to be daisy-chaining them together. So ideally, you're looking for a power supply with separate power connections, all that kind of stuff. But we can find out exactly how to get one of those power supplies. There's various sites we can use, one of which is PC Part Picker, which has got a listing on the site, so you can choose all your individual connections. Other than that, the only other way really is to go into places like Amazon or best buy that kind of thing and actually stipulate what you want from a power supply so let's head over to the computer now and we'll take a look at some sites and see how i go about buying a power supply okay so let's open up our browser of choice and the first thing we're going to do um, for most people this is going to be probably your best point of call and that is pc part picker pc part picker has got certain features built into it so you can actually find the parts you need so what we're going to do is we're going to go into system builder and we know what power supply what is you want we want a 500 watt power supply thereabouts so we'll go straight into this section here which is power supply so choose a power supply now at this point this is where it comes into the side section so we can actually make lots of changes to the filtration on this so we can have a price modification so if we've got a certain budget then we can change that now actually i've just noticed i'm in dollars so let's change that into pounds being as that we are in the united kingdom and there we go so if we change this the filters so let's say for instance on our particular power supply we've got a budget of a maximum of about seven let's say 60 pounds 60 pounds seems realistic for a 500 watt power supply and immediately you can see it's shortened down the list already so what we can do is if we've got a particular manufacturer we want to go with we can choose that so if you prefer a seasonic then you can highlight seasonic and you still get a couple listings there so again if you want to do that you can do but we'll go with all for now you can choose by their star rating. Now, this is taking the star ratings which are compiled on PC Part Picker. So obviously these do give you a general idea, but I wouldn't take these as being gospel. Obviously some people will put negative things just because they've had something daft, like it hasn't come with a power cable, all these kinds of things. So yeah, do take those with a uh, pinch of salt. The most important thing for me personally, I think is gonna be the efficiency rating. So depending on what you want, if you just want a simple 80 plus, this is gonna give you tons of options. You may want to go a little bit higher, so you may want a bronze, and then again, that adds a ton more to the list. And also then we can also add in gold. Whether or not we're going to get many gold, actually, we can remove those two and see if there's any gold. Yep, we've got a couple of gold in there, just under the £60 mark. So we've got the Be Quiet Pure Power 11, which is a fantastic power supply. Uh, we've also got the Coling Enclave, which actually 
gets um, not a lot of press actually, it's a really good power supply. 80 plus gold, 500 watt, and it is fully modular as well. Again, 60 pounds, so really good option if you're not into one of those. You've also got the Silverstone, the FX350G. Uh, only a 350 watt, I don't know why he's put that in there for some reason. That's a bit bizarre, but anyway, you get the general idea. So you can go through here and do all your selections. You can choose all if you want to. Uh, you can specify certain wattages. Links you can also do as well. So if you've got a slightly smaller enclosure to put your power supply in, you can reduce this down accordingly. Uh, generally, most people leave it open, but then you can choose other things like whether you want it modular, whether you want it fully modular, not modular or semi-modular. You can choose colors, you can choose the types. So if you're building into a smaller system and you need a Flex ATX, then you can choose that or SFX, that kind of stuff. Again, if you're doing a mini ITX, all those sorts of things. Here's where it gets a little bit more interesting. So this is where your power connections are. So if you need a lot of EPS connectors or you need four PCI Express or whatever case is, you can choose all the different types of pinouts there and you can find the power supply for you. Also, again, you can do it from here. So PCI Express 8 pin connectors, you can have five selected, you can have two selected, and again, this will reduce or increase what is available to you, and you can make sure you've got what you need. So you can find that maybe you need six SATA connectors, so you can put that in there, and then again, that's gonna reduce it down because not all power supplies will have that many. Some will have four, some will have less. Again, it depends. You may need Molex connectors, it's unlikely, but again, you can put that in there, or you can just leave that as it is set for a lowest rating so we want a minimum on here obviously four for the SATA connectors so yeah that is your minimum and maximum ranges so just set those accordingly so if you need a minimum of a certain amount of connectors hopefully you guys get the general idea so that's going to give you an idea of what is actually available and go through the list obviously pricing you can sort by or popularity so if you want to sort by price you can click on this one at the top and that will sort by prices that will give you it if your price is your thing, if you're building a system to a certain budget. Uh, also, you can change by rating. So if you want to do it by rating, you can choose by five star. So if one gets a particularly good rating, obviously you can go with that. You get the general idea. But this is a, a very good site for individually selecting a power supply. So for our particular build, uh, we've got a 500 watt power supply as our requirement. And all we need is a single PCI Express 8 pin socket, which generally we're going to find that on most power supplies even the very cheapest of ones. So if we want to, we go all the way down and again, we can choose the specific power types. But for us, um, it's not really gonna be that important. So I'm just gonna go with the 500 watts and we want a minimum of bronze. And then we can sort by price. And the cheapest one we've got here is the GameX GP. GameX G GP 400 watt. Well, actually we didn't set our parameters for wattage, so we should have done that. So our minimum wattage is going to be 500. So there, that's uh, made that a little bit easier. So yeah, GameX GP is in there, the 500 watt version, 37 pounds. We've got the uh, AeroCore integrator, which I think is actually going to be the most likely one to go with because I'm pretty sure from memory, the GameX GP has actually got the ketchup and mustard cable in which yes, you can see from the picture there. So if you don't like ketchup and mustard on your power supply, then certainly you can see pictures on here as well, which makes life a lot, lot easier. The AeroCool integrator and no, actually that one must've been the AeroCool, the other one, the Cylon. So they're not actually listing the Cylon for some reason, which is another thing actually, this isn't a gospel. So it isn't every single power supply on the market. So you may find some which actually aren't listed, but Maybe the integrator or the Colink Classic Power might be okay. That looks like it's got black cables. Yeah, so Colink Classic Power 500 watt, 80 plus bronze certified. That actually looks like a, a pretty decent deal. When we've got, looking at the side there, we've got the sticker so you can see what it pumps out. So 37 amps on the 12 volt rail, which for a 500 watt power supply is absolutely fine. You work out your wattage by times in your 12 volt by your amperage, and that should give you roughly what it is. So that's really a 450, 444 as it says there but they rate it to a 500. They generally always clock up. Um, yeah, I guess it's because you take into account the other voltages as well, but realistically it's a 450 watt on the 12 volt rail. So we've gone into a little bit too much on that. So let's see if we can find the Colink Classic Power 500 watt on our shopping site. Now we're gonna choose amazon.co.uk because uh, I think that's probably gonna be the best one. And unfortunately here, the price is considerably dearer. So what I would do at this particular point is I would actually go into 
the top section here and I'll just put in 500 watt PSU, 80 plus bronze, it's pretty much already there. And then we can sort by price, low to high, and see if there's anything else that comes up. Now again, Amazon, you can do the similar sort of thing. So you can choose uh, whether it's new or used or certain brands. So again, if we're looking for a particular brand, um, we can probably go with, I'm probably gonna go with Aerocool. Uh, we'll put Game Max in as well and see what comes up. So pricing low to high. And yeah, we get the Aerocool Cylon, which is an 80 plus certified. That's only a white unit, but again, 28 pounds. So we could potentially save a little bit of money there. Or if we were to put a little bit more money in, we could go with the Aerocool Cylon 700 watt. Clearly it's not a 700 watt power supply, but that's basically what, how they've worked out with the other voltages, but 38 pounds for a fully modular one. That is insane. So that is a good way of finding a power supply is basically go on to PC Part Picker, do some of your research on there, look at pictures, etc. Then you can go over to Amazon, or even if you want to, like I did eat just now, you can just go into Google and type it in. So let's try uh, 500 watt, 80 plus bronze. And for the lazy, you can just click on shopping and then it'll go through certain ones. And it could bring up certain sites which are local to you. Uh, some of this will be sponsored, obviously, as it says there. So do kind of uh, have a scroll through and see what else you can get. Again, you've got the Aerocool Integrator, Game Max RPG Rampage. Never heard of that one, actually. It must be a relatively new one. Clothing Classic Classic Power, as we saw before. The CIT 500W ATV Pro, which actually is a really good power supply. We've had that one before, and that's not a bad price from Scan.co.uk. So again, it does make sense to actually go through and get an idea. First of all, find out your wattage, then have a look on PC Part Picker. Look at your cabling if you've got specific requirements. If you're a little bit more flexible, then obviously you can you can wing it a little bit. Personally, I would say um, use Amazon. Amazon's returns are fantastic. If you're a prime customer, you can basically order the power supply. If you get it and it turns out you haven't got the right amount of connectors or the cables are too short, all that kind of stuff, you've got 30 days to send it back. So for peace of mind and for flexibility, certainly Amazon definitely gets my vote. I would always prefer buying from Amazon over any other company. Uh, purely for their excellent after sales service. Even if you can get it a little bit ch cheaper elsewhere, I would probably go with Amazon regardless. But anyway, that is down to you. Let me know in the comments section, where is your shopping place of choice for power supplies? Have you got any particular classics? And for this particular power supply that we're looking for, the 500 watt bronze or fifth, the 500 watt 80 plus, either a white or a bronze, with uh, black cabling, let me know what would be your go-to power supply. Let us know in the comments. Be really interested to see what your particular go-tos are. But anyway, I think that's gonna be pretty much it for this one. So uh, yeah, let's go back to the other camera. So there we go. There is uh, some of the tools that I use when I'm actually trying to buy a power supply. Again, for me, Amazon always uh, comes out on top. The returns are super simple, very easy to do, even in these COVID times, really easy just to uh, put a returns label on and take it to the local post office, that kind of stuff. Works out really well. PC Part Picker, actually, their site, again, don't take all the results on there as being gospel. There are often changes, so do, do your research and double check your cable lengths and your cable types, all that kind of stuff, because you never know, things may be updated, newer models may come out, and they may not have updated it correctly. But certainly, PC Part Picker will be very, very helpful in choosing your power supply and also looking at pricing, that kind of stuff, and then you can gauge it, seeing what the best prices are on there, then maybe head over to Amazon and uh, see what the price is like there and make up your own mind whether you think it's worth it or not. Obviously, if you're a prime customer, the free postage does uh, make it very, very good. This is starting to sound like an Amazon advert. But anyway, that's gonna wrap this one up. Hopefully this video has been useful to you. If it has, don't forget to click on the like button. And while you're down there, click on the subscribe button and you'll be notified of future video releases. And also don't forget, we will be following this up with part three, which is when we've actually ordered our power supply and we stick it in the machine, just to wrap up the entire series. So I've been Mike, this is Mike's Unboxing Reviews and How To, and hopefully we'll catch you guys in the very next video. Thanks for watching.